Okay, this time we're going to look at AM synth, uh, the native waveforms. Uh, it, it's going to be cool. You're going to like it. Uh, we're going to go over how synths worked in in history, uh, hardware, and into uh, how they work now in software. One thing I want to say is there's there's a million uh, synths out there uh, in software, and every synth maker has his own idea of how synths should work. Uh, for, for, for me, uh, I like AM synth simply because it's so basic, it's so classic, it's so close to uh, how, how the hardware was, so you kind of get the basis of how synths should work. Uh, and, and trust me, if you can write code, if you can uh, make an Excel spreadsheet, if you can combine uh, sentences into a paragraph, then you can combine these synth blocks into, into making your own sounds. Okay, to start with, I think it helps to look at uh, what the classic hardware synthesizers, how they worked, and, and try to take that knowledge and map it on to modern synthesizers, uh, and, and we'll start there. VCO, Voltage Control Oscillator, uh, was a, a hardware module, a, a piece of electronics that made noise. It made uh, uh, various different kinds of uh, waves. And it might make uh, sine waves, square waves, uh, triangle waves, uh, sawtooth waves. Might just put out white noise. But one way or the other, it was an oscillator that was uh, creating uh, electronic waves. And those would go into a filter. And the filter was typically, uh, it was a low-pass filter, which passes lower frequencies. So those higher uh, raspy uh, uh, hard on the ear partials uh, didn't come through, so it would filter out some of the some of the sound from the oscillator, and it would put it down to remember envelope generator from last week, uh, the attack decay sustain release that we talked about, and a voltage control amplifier, uh, and then those were the those were the cores, and after that then. All kinds of different things might happen. Uh, they might put in a low frequency oscillator, more envelope generators, reverb, uh, portamento, different filters, choruses, arpeggiators, all those kind of things. And sometimes they would even feed them back into these basic modules. So you might have a low frequency oscillator that was feeding back into the original oscillator and and uh, sending, you know, low frequency means two, three hertz, two or three times a second. So a second, my wow, wow, wow. Uh, might be going into the voltage control oscillator and controlling what that thing went. And maybe some of this stuff, the reverbs, choruses, arpeggiators, maybe they went straight down into your ear. But one way or the other, uh, the beginning of synthesis was a wave generator run through a filter, run through an envelope generator and an amplifier, and then a lot of other stuff, miscellaneous, could be this, could be that. Uh, so, uh, that being said, let's look at AM synth, which uh, I think is the best synth I've found that represents that. If we look at that, here's oscillator 1, which we'll get into why it says oscillator 1 later, but it, it represents... Uh, uh, the part that the, well, the voltage control oscillator, what we said makes the sound. This time I have a sine wave up. Uh, over here is the voltage control filter. Notice there's resonance and a cutoff, and we'll get more into those in detail. And then here's your envelope generator, which I hope attack, decay, sustain, release. I hope that looks familiar. All of this other stuff would be considered in our diag diagram before the magic. Uh, here's another oscillator. Here's a low uh, frequency uh, oscillator to do that wah wah. Here's a attack, an envelope generator, attack to case sustain release that can be put on the filter. Uh, here's drive, reverb, other things, but the the basics of the original hardware synths into AM synth. Uh, the basic concepts are voltage control oscillator into the filter into the envelope generator. And now let's go let's go play with some of that. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, here's AM Synth live. Uh, I've got a sine wave here. Uh, everything's over on oscillator one just to get started. No attack, no decay, high sustain, so I can just hold down a key and you can really hear the sound uh, release. Cutoff is what we call wide open. 
Uh, there is virtually no cutoff here. Uh, this would mean it's it's only 15% of the waves coming through. Uh, resonance is down for the moment. Uh, LFO is, is basically shut down, the low frequency oscillator. So let's let's listen to a, a sine wave. Let me change that up. Here's a square or a pulse wave. And let's let's pull down the cutoff a little bit. Hear how that smooths out like we like we've talked about before. Uh, I've got a low pass set to let's set it to 12. Notice you a little higher there. You're you're still getting some of the some of the uh, higher partials brought into that, and it's not cutting it off quite as much. Uh, resonance is a funny thing. Uh, to me, it seems like every synth maker uh, has a different resonant module. Uh, some of them very, very visible. Some of them uh, uh, not. Uh, resonance, what it is, is for some reason back in the hardware days, the the cutoff, right before the cutoff, you'd have a frequency boost, and they called that resonance. And so the the frequencies near the cutoff point uh, will will come out louder. So here's high resonance. And with no resonance. You hear the difference? Okay. And let's briefly take a look at the low frequency oscillator. We'll set it to, I don't know, we'll start with, say, 5 close to five uh, and I'm going to play a note and listen what happens when I divert the low frequency oscillator to control the original oscillator and that's what it does it gives that wah we talked about uh, let's put it on the filter and you'll hear kind of the same thing but but not as much it's going to five times a second or what we're yeah 4.8 times a second it's going to kick this filter in and and run through its you still get that kind of throb but it's it's a lot subtler it's because it's working on the filter and not the uh, not the original generation of the frequency itself so that's that's this i hope that you'll uh, take some time to play with this. Next time we'll go through some classic synth sounds you can build yourself. But I hope that you'll take a minute, stay away from the presets, and just get to know what these these sine waves natively, or what these waves natively sound like. A uh, sine wave. Square pulse wave. That should sound a little bit like a clarinet or oboe. Uh, that on off on off on off just like a reed vibrating real quick let's take a look down here at the saw or triangle this uh, for some reason this this seems backwards on mine this is actually there. let me wide open that to each other. Uh, sawtooth. sawtooth, very abrasive. And then lastly on, on this one we've got white noise. Anyway, take a few minutes, uh, learn how what these these uh, various waveforms sound like on their own, and next time we'll uh, try to build up some of our own with classic synth sounds. Notice that I haven't brought in Oscillator 2 yet. We'll do that next time. Uh, ring mod, uh, those kind of things. But Oscillator, filter, uh, the envelope generator, 
and low frequency oscillator to control i i never use it to the amp but to the to the oscillator and to the filter uh, and have some fun i'll see you next time okay well that ends this week uh, i hope that was that was good as good for you as it was for me uh, here are the versions i'm using as always if your stuff doesn't act like my stuff check this first and here are the links web pages uh, as i've said before people out there will help you i'll help you uh, leave comments email me whatever and let's get this going i'll see you next time